The number you have dialed is currently unavailable. Please leave a message. The frustrating voice, the murderer, the hitman, the rapist. These are all roles that David Dukas is known for. But is he really like the characters we have come to love or hate? Who is the man behind the mask? Oh, I've known I wanted to be an actor since I was about three years old. I used to always give concerts, like all little kids do, you know. It's concert time! Woo! And you do little concerts and stuff, and I used to do uh, Elvis Presley was my favorite. Blue suede shoes, because I'm actually quite old, so, you know, Elvis was pretty cool back then. He was alive, for starters. <laughs> well, it's one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, now go, can't go, but don't you. Step on my blue suede shoe. And I always used to rope my sister into playing games, acting games. Poor Doreen, she always had to be, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd allocate a role for her to play. And then I would be the lead and she had to be the support and she was so bored with all that crap. But I, you know, I mean, she was a loving, kind sister, so she'd play along. And in 1976, when television finally arrived in South Africa, like a gazillions of years after the rest of the, the, the free world, um, there was a show called Shane starring David Carradine. It was a western. And every Friday night, we were all around this television. Whoa, you know, <laughs> Shane. And um, there was a, ki a little kid in, in, in the show that lived on the ranch. I don't even know who this kid was or... Uh, yeah, but I just remember seeing this kid on TV and going, but that's a kid, and he's on TV. And my, because my mom used to t tell me, this, you can be an actor, but when you're grown up, because acting's a job that big people do, it's a career. And I thought, oh, okay, so like, I have to wait. Okay, but fine, I'll finally get there. Then I saw this kid on TV and I said, hey, mom, there's a kid on TV, and if he can do it, I can do it too. And she went, yes, but you still got to finish school and grow up first. Did you ever go to school? Yeah. I bet they didn't teach you anything worth knowing. I, I used to tell my mom, I'm going to go to America. For some reason, I couldn't say America. So I said, I'm going to America. I'm going to marry an American woman. <laughs> Maybe I knew you need a green card way back then. And uh, I'm going to be a Hollywood star. Yeah, right. And as it turned out, I married an Afrikaans woman who I love and adore. And I live in the best country in the world. And I love what I do. Tell me something, Mr. Guthrie. Do you have gossip here? Gossip? I've often wondered if it can survive in so remote a location. You see, gossip is what holds civilization together. It reinforces shame. And without shame, well, the world is a very dangerous place. Um, I know David Dukas from the industry, obviously. Uh, we first worked together on a, an international movie called Berserker Hell's Warrior, uh, probably 15 years ago or so. No, 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 <laughs> no, I'm not a alpha male at all, at all, at all, at all, at all, at all. <laughs> Um, I don't think David's, David's much like the characters he plays at all. Um, you know, it's, uh, as performers, we, we get sometimes typecast into the types of roles that we need to play. And typecasting is very real, so producers and casting directors begin to see you in a part that you apparently played very well, and the public are introduced to you in that way. David's a good guy. Um, a good enough a guy for me to have introduced to my best friend, and they've now ended up married, so yeah, I don't think he's anything like the bad guys that he plays. Well, of course you've got to identify. There's something about you that identifies with the characters you play, but um, I think there's something about all of us that can identify with characters that are far removed from ourselves. I definitely think that those of us who play the villain have a bit of that in the mind somewhere, I, I think there's a bit of darkness in, in all of us, uh, in, in the best of people. There is that, that little bit of something in the background that, uh, that we can draw on. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that somebody's a bad person as such. 
uh, but I think we've, we've all got light and dark and different shades uh, within us. And um, to be a good performer, you've got to be able to draw something of yourself into your characters. It's, uh, I really enjoy playing the villain. Um, you know, if anybody can play the nice guy, it's, it's always the easy part. But to play, to play a good villain, to play a villain with colour, is, is not an easy thing to do. Um, because you've got to, you can't just be the bad guy. There's got to be that something that hooks people in. You need to, you need to make them human in some way. And you need to find those moments to show there's still a human heart that beats inside that character. So that is challenging and that is fun. So I don't know if you guys will remember a show called Dallas way back when. Now, it boils down to, do you want to play Bobby or do you want to play JR? Of course you want to play JR. <laughs> That's it. It's the good guy in the bad guy that I enjoy playing. I don't regret it. It's the most fun to play the villain. Do you know what the gossip is in London about you? The gossip is that you make your profits selling ill-gotten cargo stolen by the pirates of Providence Island. There's no truth to that. We'll certainly find out, won't we?